The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. Today is the first of a series of episodes that will introduce you to the five creative thinking skills. Future episodes will explore each skill, including its background, steps, application, and some examples. In this episode, I'll be discussing how divergent thinking can transform your life, making obstacles that look like opportunities, and the impossible suddenly possible. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes. Let's get started. This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom. Using the power of divergent thinking is essential in mastering creative thinking. Divergent thinking is the centerpiece of creativity. It is what allows individuals and teams to generate multiple, massive numbers of ideas and solutions to a specific problem or an opportunity that has presented itself. It diverges from linear thinking, which seeks to find the one correct answer. By using divergent thinking, you can break out of your usual patterns and tap in to your creative potential. In today's episode, we will explore the concept of divergent thinking and how you can master it so it becomes a tool for unlocking your creativity and your ability to innovate. Now, let's take a look at some of the background on divergent thinking. The the core idea of divergent thinking is to generate a large number of ideas or solutions to a single problem. It's like opening your mind's toolbox when faced with a challenge and exploring every tool, idea, and approach available rather than just going straight for the usual hammer or screwdriver. Divergent thinking was first conceptualized in the 1950s by psychologist J.P. Golford during a period when creativity and cognitive processes were becoming central to psychological studies. Guilford, who was among the first to differentiate between convergent and divergent thinking, highlighted the latter's role in creativity. He noted that while convergent thinking converges on a single correct solution, divergent thinking diverges into multiple potential solutions, paving the way for innovative thinking and creativity. Now, over the decades, this concept has evolved and been embraced as a critical skill for problem solving and generating novel ideas. Its development has significantly impacted the fostering of creativity and innovation. Divergent thinking has a few critical characteristics that define and drive its effectiveness. These are one, generates multiple solutions. It's fundamentally what divergent thinking is all about. It thrives on how many ideas and and building up a huge list that you can then call through to find the best one. It challenges individuals to come up with as many solutions or ideas as possible without any form of restriction not holding you back. Two, it promotes originality. Divergent thinking encourages the creation of unique and novel ideas. It values originality. It pushes the thinkers to explore new territory beyond just the obvious conventional ideas around a particular problem. Three, it encourages risk-taking. Divergent thinking involves exploring the unknown, including accepting and taking risks. This risk-taking based on the belief that failure is part of the creative process and a stepping stone to successful innovation. In number four, flexibility. This characteristic pertains to the ability to shift approaches easily and view problems 
from multiple perspectives. Flexibility is crucial for divergent thinking as it enables the thinker to pivot among ideas and approaches without being confined to some predefined linear path. Five, nonlinear thinking. Divergent thinking is inherently nonlinear. It does not follow a straight path, but meanders and allow unexpected connections and conclusions and the discovery of unfounded assumptions to emerge in the process. And number six, encourages curiosity and exploration. A divergent thinker is naturally curious and enjoys exploring a range of possibilities. This exploration is not just about finding an answer, but about understanding different aspects of the problem and identifying various angles of possible approaches to solve it. Now, the obvious question is, is what's the linkage between divergent thinking and convergent thinking. Now, divergent thinking thrives on the quantity of ideas rather than the quality. It doesn't matter, just throw the ideas out. This open and approach encourages thinking beyond all of the traditional boundaries. Convergent thinking applies critical thinking skills to evaluate and choose among all of the ideas generated by divergent thinking. It's the tool that convergent is what finds that needle in the haystack. Now, together, divergent and convergent thinking encompasses the full cycle of a creative process. Divergent thinking starts with the cycle with convergent thinking following up, focusing, refining those ideas into practical solution. Each has its problem, it has its place in problem solving and in the realm of innovation. More on convergent thinking skills will be covered in another episode in this series on mastering creative thinking. So, the importance of divergent thinking extends far beyond traditional problem solving and creative pursuits. In a rapidly changing world, thinking divergently is more critical than ever. It fosters adaptability, allowing individuals and organizations to thrive in uncertain in very complex environments. Divergent thinking encourages a culture of innovation and continuous improvement by considering many potential answers to a problem or a question. This approach is invaluable in fields such as technology, where new solutions and advancements are constantly required to meet evolving demands. Diverging thinking enhances learning, understanding by encouraging the examination of topics from multiple viewpoints. This broadened perspective can lead to more comprehensive and nuanced insights, fostering greater empathy and collaboration among teams. Ultimately, mastering divergent thinking equips individuals with the flexibility, the creativity, and resiliency needed to tackle the challenges that we are facing. So how do you master them? Mastering divergent thinking is not solely about just generating creative ideas. It's about developing a mindset and a skill set that enables endless possibilities. The following sections offer some practical advice and exercises to cultivate this essential capability, ensuring you can meet the challenges and the opportunities that you are faced in your day-to-day job. And it's not just about work. Applying this can also have an impact on your personal life. So first up, let's talk about mindset. Adopting a mindset conducive to virgin thinking involves several intentional practices and perspectives. Here are some tips for nurturing that approach. First up, foster curiosity. Cultivate an insatiable curiosity about the world. Ask questions, lots of questions. Work on creating very good questions about everything and pursue answers not just from a position of necessity, but for the joy of learning and discovering new insights. Two, you have to have a mindset that welcomes failure. You need to see failure as a stepping stone to innovation. Understand that every attempt provides valuable lessons, and the fear of getting it wrong hinders creativity more than the mistakes themselves. Three, practice open-mindedness. 
challenge existing beliefs, and be open to new ideas, even if they initially seem impractical or totally unrelated to your current knowledge base. Four, encourage idea generation without immediate judgment. Allow yourself and others to brainstorm freely without critiquing ideas too early. Reserve judgment until the ideation phase to ensure a broad range of possibilities is considered. Five, seek diverse experiences. Immerse yourself in various environments and cultures and fields of knowledge. It's one of the reasons why I so benefited from all of the travel I did earlier in my career. I've been into 120 countries and seeing how people think, live, operate, what people's hopes and dreams are, fed my ability to empathize with their needs as we drove innovation activities. Diversity of experience can significantly, significantly expand your creative inputs. That is the stimulus feeding your subconscious. Six, practice discomfort. Stepping out of your comfort zone is essential. Now, you may think because I do these YouTube videos and I've been doing the podcast now since 2005 that I am an extrovert. I'm actually an introvert. I'm much happy just to stay here in my studio or in my office, working, you know, sending emails, interacting. Um, I have to prepare for that and I work hard at it. I try to make myself look natural on stage or when I'm presenting. So that is part of getting out of your comfort zone. My traveling and going out and sitting in villages in Africa or uh, living with a family for a few days as we were developing a product at HP for the Indian market to really understand what the home life was like in uh, the shanty towns in, in India. Um, very uncomfortable, but you need to get out of that comfort zone. So try new activities, learn new skills, engage with people who challenge your way of thinking or who live in a totally different way of life than you do. Comfort often breeds complacency, which is the antithesis of divergent thinking. By intentionally integrating these practices into your daily life, you can shift your mindset to one that is conducive to divergent thinking. So, once you've got your mindset aligned, what are some exercises, practices that you can put in place? So here are a few practical exercises and activities designed to enhance your divergent thinking skills. One, brainstorming sessions. Regularly engage in brainstorming sessions on a variety of topics. It doesn't have to be about work all the time. It could be if you're on the board of your uh, church or synagogue or if you are uh, volunteering for uh, the food bank, bring brainstorming skills to all of those activities. One, it allows you to teach, and there's nothing better than teaching to learning. So by teaching, it reinforces that skill set, and you share what you've learned. So when you're brainstorming, though, set a time limit and a goal for the number of ideas to generate. That's what we call an idea quota. And don't filter your thoughts during the process. This practice encourages unbounded thinking. There are many materials, podcasts, videos on my channels, on brainstorming. Search for it. You'll find it. Two, daily creativity challenges. Assign yourself a daily challenge that requires creative output, such as drawing something new each day, writing a hundred-word story, or inventing a product. The key is to produce something original regularly. Set your brain to expect to do that. Three, and again, I've taught about this. There's a podcast, there's videos on SCAMPER. So SCAMPER stands for Substitute, Combine, Adapt, Modify, Put to Another Use, Eliminate, and Reverse. You apply this technique to everyday objects or an idea that you've come up with and you're kind of stuck, and you can't, you're trying to generate that next level, apply Scamper. It allows you to explore how you can innovate or improve them through this lens. And Scamper is just one of literally hundreds of these kinds of tools that you can use to help you generate 
an increased number of ideas. So remember, we are talking about divergent thinking, which is what? About the number of ideas you generate. Number four, do thought experiments. I got this from Einstein. Einstein is famous for doing and, and understanding things like relatively by his thought experiments. So engage in thought experiments that pose unusual scenarios or problems. This not only stimulates your divergent thinking, but also it pushes your imagination and your problem-solving skills to new levels. Five, ask questions. Use a set of questions like the killer question card deck. You can get that over at innovation.tools, which is my online store. And use the power of questions to cause you to look at a problem or an opportunity from various angles. Ask questions like, what if people could teleport? Or what if water was scarce? Can open up a wealth of creative solutions and alternatives. Six, change your environment. Regularly altering your surroundings can spark creativity. Work from a cafe, a park, or even a different room in your house. Changing your physical environment can lead to shifts in perspective and new ideas. Every summer, my wife and I, we travel in my 45-foot entertainer bus. It has Starlink on the roof so I can be connected wherever we're at. But going around the country and staying off the beaten path, meeting people, seeing, meeting with entrepreneurs, seeing their businesses, it, it, it is what really fuels um, my subconscious and allows me to make these random connections of ideas that um, I share with others that they can actually turn into uh, products and services. Seven, reverse thinking. Instead of approaching a problem in traditional forward-moving manner, such as what is 20 years gonna, from now going to look like, start with the desired outcome and work backwards. Think of yourself as being 20 years from now, so 20 you know, 44. What does 2044 look like? And then back up and figure out everything that's got to happen to make that future. Now, this reverse engineering of ideas can uncover really novel pathways. Uh, it's a, I found it to be a very valuable tool for me. Number eight, play and experimentation. Dedicate time to play and experimentation without a specific goal. This inc could include building with Legos, which I did with my son when he was younger, and now it's my grandson. Sketching freely. I'm originally an architecture major, so sketching and drawing and having all of my ink drawing pens laying around all over my desk is kind of my day-to-day -day life. And experimenting with DIY. You know, I have um, all kinds of electronic components. I can build hardware I can still write software, yes. I can still write software. So build things. Experiment with things. Play is a powerful catalyst for innovation. Don't do it for that you got to do it for a product. Do it because it's fun. And then inter interdisciplinary learning. Delve into subjects or fields outside of your area of expertise. Combining ideas from different fields can generate transformative innovations and cultivate a more robust ability for you to think divergently. It's those random connections that really open up things that you just never expected. So by integrating these exercises activities into your daily routine, you can systematically expand your divergent thinking capabilities, leading to more creative outputs. So when do you use divergent thinking? Divergent thinking is particularly effective in several scenarios across your personal and professional life. Here are some key scenarios that I've thought of about where it's highly beneficial. One is brainstorming and ideation. We've already talked about that. When you're starting a project and you're trying to come up with uh, as many ideas as possible, that is divergent thinking. Two, problem-solving situations. When you're faced with complex problems that don't have a straightforward solution, divergent thinking helps in exploring all the avenues, all the alternatives that might not be immediately obvious. Three, creative endeavors, artistic, creative projects such as writing, designing or inventing, where innovation and originality 
are the desired outcomes. Four, strategic planning. During the planning phase of business strategies, marketing campaigns, or any scenario requiring kind of the out of the box, I hate that term, but I'll use it, out of the box thinking, to identify unique opportunities or differentiate from your competitors. Five, conflict resolution. When traditional methods of resolving disputes you know, and you're looking for those multiple beneficial solutions. Six, personal growth. In personal development, divergent thinking aids in self-reflection and the exploration of new hobbies and career paths or life changes. Now, there are also times when you should not use divergent thinking. So while it's invaluable, it doesn't, it's not the, the be-all, end-all for everything that you would want it to be applied to. So recognizing the context when it's crucial for optimal decision and problem solving and when not to use it. So here are some instances where divergent thinking may not be recommended. First up, time-sensitive decisions. In scenarios where quick decision-making is critical, such as emergency situations or when facing tight deadlines, the expansive nature of divergent thinking might delay taking necessary immediate action. Two, high-risk environments. In settings where the stakes are high and errors have significant consequences, like emergency rooms at a hospital or in the courtroom battling uh, a lawsuit or safety-critical fields, focusing on well-established protocols and convergent thinking might be more appropriate. Three, when clarity and simplicity are required, projects or communications that benefit from simplicity and clear directives might be complicated by introducing too many ideas or options, potentially leading to confusion or, worst, decision paralysis. Four, during the implementation phase, once a plan has been set and actions are underway, continuously applying divergent thinking can disrupt progress. It can lead to inefficiencies. At this stage, a more focused, convergent approach is often more beneficial. Five, in highly regulated industries. In industries that are tightly regulated, such as finance, pharmaceuticals, and aviation, adhering to established guidelines and regulations is paramount. Excessive divergence from these standards can risk noncompliance and significant legal issues. So understanding when not to engage in divergent thinking helps to apply it more effectively where it can yield the most benefit. Ensuring both creativity and pragmatism are balanced appropriately in the decision-making process. So as we wrap up in this next episode, I'll focus on convergent thinking and its role in mastering creative thinking skills. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the upcoming episodes. In the meantime, continue to cultivate your divergent thinking skills and incorporate them into your daily routine to enhance innovation and unlock new possibilities. Remember, creativity is a skill that can be developed and strengthened with practice. Keep exploring, keep experimenting, and keep playing without limits. You never know where it might lead. Podcasting nonstop since 2005, This has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network.